what kind of, uh, and you guys have a property management company as well, right? Yeah, we have a property management company. My, my building partner owns the management company that's managed my own personal portfolio and our investors. And we watch this very closely, Bill. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's been very surprising, as you said, the CDC does not have the jurisdiction to do what they've been doing, So, but we have to go through processes to get it reversed. Luckily, it's a state-by-state -state thing, and I know when you and I have had conversations, certain states are standing up to that stronger than other states. So I think it's really important for investors to see where they're investing in that state. Um, and, and rent moratoriums, the same thing. Unfortunately, certain states are, are, are very prepared to take away the rent payments from the small, hardworking landlords, but they're not putting moratoriums on, on the mortgage payments to the large banks. They're not putting moratoriums on the insurance payments uh, or insurance premiums you owe to your insurance company to protect that property. And God forbid they were going to put a moratorium on the property taxes <laughs> that are owed. Uh, I don't think we're going to see that. So when that comes up, you know, those, that's a pretty serious situation. Luckily, here in Florida, we've had some moratoriums, but you, there is still ability to evict. There's ability, ability to screen very well. Uh, unlike certain certain states where, man, some of my friends are really struggling, um, and I do feel for them. And it's something that you have to watch now that none of us knew we were going to have to consider, uh, really, in our investing strategy. I mean, we have uh, we have vacant properties that we're trying to foreclose on right now. Vacant, they're not even completed, and Mecklenburg County has already kicked the bucket three months now for no reason at all. Um, and again, houses are vacant. Yeah, they're just they're they're just pushing it. Uh, back because they don't have the, I guess they don't have the personnel. I don't, and the courts are so backed up. I, I don't know what the reasons are. They won't give us one. They just keep uh, pushing our court dates back. Yeah. So even if you're the lender and you're having to foreclose, you're, you have issues. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, I understand it if these homes were occupied and you were worried about kicking people out. Yeah. But, but they're not even completed. And then, of course, we get notices that we have to, uh, go in there and take care of the property, but we don't own the property because yeah, it yeah. hadn't gone through foreclosure yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you're in that, you're in that in between phase. It's a very interesting time again, but you have to be diligent. You know, I really feel for the, the mom and pop landlords in, in certain areas and States where they look, they signed up just to have a property. They didn't know they'd be, you know, this is pretty, this is pretty complex stuff. Not, who is the CDC? Why are they involved? Can they be involved? You know, how can you work through these things better? How can you push push the, the ball down the hill a little bit faster than than most people? I mean, there's some real technicalities here. So it's a, it's a different time for real estate investing. I think it's a very lucrative time. I think if you're in the right thing and you get the right uh, system in place to be able to handle these, a lot of people are going to fall off. Um, obviously, the stay-at-home mandates have made the place you stay at home, pretty, um, pretty favorable on where people want to spend money. I mean, we've all seen this in, in this, you know, increase in values, this increase in, in sales activity. Uh, but, but there are definitely some new rules to the game. Well, I, I would say in your particular model and correct me if I'm wrong, you don't really have the, um, rent issues that some other places would have. Number one, your uh, tenant clients are a little higher on the economic uh, scale than in some other areas. And, you know, they're, they're paying their rent. Wouldn't you say? They're, they're paying, they're paying the rent. We, we, we do not have a big default rate right now on rents, which is great. Um, we're also being able to screen right from the get go. Remember we're building these new, so there's, there's not a lot of turnover in the rentals that we have and the properties that are being built. We're starting from scratch. And, and let's face it, if in certain states, and then it go, I know it, it changes county by county too, uh, but in, in areas where the eviction laws still stand and have not been just completely removed, people are more, more likely to pay rent. You know, it's kind of, you know, when you put certain parameters or, or discipline around your kids or anything that you work with, I think that having, you know, removing these completely just opens up for some really, really bad irresponsibility. Um, so we're, we're, we're lucky again with most of Florida has kept some, you know, some discipline around, I mean, we're, we're talking pretty simple checks and balances. If you live in a property and you're receiving government money and 
we can ask to see if you're still working, then you should be able to still pay rent. Um, you know, and if you ha have COVID, no problem. Could we just get a COVID test? Um, you know, it's, it, but some places you can't do that. You can't do any of that. And that's, that's really a problem. So I think that, uh, again, you know, just know your backyard, know the playing field you're on and what the rules are right now for your certain area.